the sinking of the titanic and other great sea disasters edited by logan marshall the heroes who remained the women who left the ship the men who remained there is little to choose between them for heroism many of the women compelled to take to the boats would have stayed had it been possible to share the fate of their nearest and dearest without whom their lives are crippled broken and disconsolate the heroes who remained would have said with greenville we have only done our duty as a man is bound to do they sought no palms or crowns of martyrdom they also serve who only stand and wait and their first action was merely to step aside and give places in the boats to women and children some of whom were too young to comprehend or to remember there was no debate as to whether the life of a financier a master of business was rated higher in the scale of values than that of an ignorant peasant mother a woman was a woman whether she wore rags or pearls a life was given for a life with no assertion that one was priceless and the other comparatively valueless many of those who elected to remain might have escaped chivalry is a mild appellation for their conduct some of the vaunted knights of old were desperate cowards by comparison a fight in the open field or jousting in the tournament did not call out the manhood in a man as did the waiting till the great ship took the final plunge in the knowledge that the seas round were covered with loving and yearning witnesses whose own salvation was not assured when the roll is called hereafter of those who are purged of pride because they died who know the worth of their days let the names of the men who went down with the titanic be found written there in the sight of god and men the obvious lesson and whatever view of the accident be taken whether the moralist shall use it to point the text of a solemn or denunciatory warning or whether the materialist swinging to the other extreme scouts any other theory than that of the fortuitous concurrence of atoms there is scarcely a thinking mortal who has heard of what happened who has not been deeply stirred in the sense of personal bereavement to a profound humility and the conviction of his own insignificance in the greater universal scheme many there are whom the influences of religion do not move and upon whose hearts are most generous sentiments knock in vain who still are overawed and bowed by the magnitude of this catastrophe no matter what they believe about it the effect is the same the effect is to reduce a man from the swaggering braggart the vainglorious lord of what he sees the self-made master of his fate of nature of time of space of everything to his true microscopic stature in the cosmos he goes in tears to put together again the fragments of the few small pitiful things that belong to him though love may pine and reason chafe there came a voice without reply the only comfort all that can bring surcease of sorrow is that men fashioned in the image of their maker rose to the emergency like heroes and went to their grave as bravely as any who have given their lives at any time in war the hearts of those who waited on the land and agonized were impotent to save have been laid upon the same altars of sacrifice the mourning of those who will not be comforted rises from alien lands together with our own in a common broken intercession how little is the eight hundred eighty two feet of the monster that we have launched compared with the arc of the rainbow we can see even in our grief spanning the frozen boreal mist the best of what we do and are just god forgave the ancient sacrifice and still our work must go on it is the business of men and women neither to give way to unavailing grief nor to yield to the crushing incubus of despair but to find hope that is at the bottom of everything even at the bottom of the sea where that glorious virgin of the ocean is dying and when she took it unto herself a mate she must espouse the everlasting sea even so for any progress of the race there must be the ancient sacrifice of man's own stubborn heart in all his pride he must forever lay in dust life's glory dead 
he cannot rise to the height it was intended he should reach till he has plumbed the depths till he has devoured the bread of the bitterest affliction till he has known the ache of hopes deferred of anxious expectation disappointed of dreams that are not to be fulfilled this side of the river that waters the meads of paradise there still must be a reason why it is not an unhappy thing to be taken from the world we know to one a wonder still and so that we go bravely what does it matter the mode of our going it was not only those who stood back who let the women and children go to the boats that died there died among us on the shore something of the fierce greed of bitterness something of the sharp hatred of passion something of the mad lust of revenge and of knife-edge competition though we are not aware of it perhaps we are not quite the people that we were before out of the mystery an awful hand was laid upon us all and what we had thought the colossal power of wealth was in a twinkling shown to be no more than the strength of an infant's little finger or the twining tendril of a plant lest we forget lest we forget the agony and despair which possessed the occupants of these boats as they were carried away from the doomed giant leaving husbands and brothers behind is almost beyond description it is little wonder that the strain of these moments with the physical and mental suffering which followed during the early morning hours left many of the women still hysterical when they reached new york where manhood perished not where cross the lines of forty north and fifty fourteen west there rolls a wild and greedy sea with death upon its crest no stone or wreath from human hands will ever mark the spot where fifteen hundred men went down but manhood perished not old ocean takes but little heed of human tears or woe no shafts adorn the ocean graves nor weeping willows grow nor is there need of marble slab to keep in mind the spot where noble men went down to death but manhood perished not those men who looked on death and smiled and trod the crumbling deck have saved much more than precious lives from out that awful wreck though countless joys and hopes and fears were shattered at a breath tis something that the name of man did not go down to death tis not an easy thing to die even in the open air twelve hundred miles from home and friends in a shroud of black despair a wreath to crown the brow of man and hide a former blot will ever blossom o'er the waves where manhood perished not harvey p hugh